Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. Good. We're just um, getting the computer so you can see the um, audience. Can you see us? All right. All right. Hello, <coughs> familia. Uh, okay, we're ready to go now. Um, please, everybody, give a warm welcome to Professor Karu Yamaguchi. Can, can you also see my slide on the screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can I start now? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm uh, a working from uh, Ankara, Turkey this time. So today I'd like to talk about the uh, public money program worldwide as a new monetary reform movement. This is exactly a new uh, kind of monetary reform activities, uh, especially which is going to uh, uh, take place in Japan. So I'm very pleased to be able to present uh, my talk this year as usual. So this uh, talk is uh, dedicated to the memory of Lord Wapat 48. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we lost two very important uh, directors at AMI, but still I think Jamie is taking uh, a good uh, 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 the, uh, continuing traditions to promote monetary uh, reform activities in the United States. So, let me just uh, uh, mention about uh, one memory uh, with uh, Bob. In the year 2013, uh, uh, Stefan Zarenga proposed the AMI uh, presentation of monetary reform activities at the Eastern Economic Association. This is a very, very important key economic association meeting in the United States. So he was uh, very, very uh, active to bring the, the need for monetary reform at this uh, uh, economic association. And he asked me to present my result at this meeting. So I was very pleased to attend this meeting, but at that time, I was uh, in a sense fired from the Toshiro University uh, because of my a probably uh, research on monetary reform. So I was unable to attend the meeting. So, and I said to Stefan, sorry, I want to come back. I can't to find enough funds to attend your conference. So all of a sudden, Bob uh, generously proposed a partial support of my travel costs to this important conference. It was a kind of surprise uh, offer to me. So I really appreciated his kind, generous uh, support to attend my conference to this important economic uh, uh, association conference. As a result, I was able to present the, the paper which is called Workings of Public Money System, Modeling the American Monetary Act. So this publication or this presentation become a very uh, important uh, encouragement for me to continue my uh, research. So in that sense, I do really like to appreciate uh, Bob's uh, partial uh, financial support to this uh, uh, monetary economic activities. So in that sense, uh, I, I owe a lot to Bob as well as Stefan Darenka. So I really like all of you to continue your activities on monetary reform in the United States. So today I would like to bring a little more new aspect of monetary uh, uh, reform activities. So I think you have my slide at hand. So this is a whole cosmos of money. Uh, which are classified in this one table. So 
Uh, whenever you have some confusion, it's always better to come back to this mobile tables and where are we now? Which kind of what kind of money we are looking for? If you look at this table, look uh, vertically, the, we have a so-called classification based on media. Money is uh, nothing but the information of commodity values. So that means information of value needs some media to carry on. So traditionally, we have uh, this kind of media, commodity media, met, uh, metal coins media, paper media, uh, digital card. And recently, uh, we have blockchain-based media. So this is a way we classify money in one way. But on the other hand, if you look at this, uh, this side, we have a classification of public money and debt money. As well as we have a classification based on legal tender money and functional money. So, so we all discussed about uh, the monetary form in terms of this table. So let us just start more, more uh, uh, explain more in detail. First, take a look at the vertical classification. That is the traditional classification based on the media. So the money used to be uh, uh, ca uh, carried as a commodity money then uh, metal and paper. Those are traditional media to carry money. Then uh, later, especially a couple decades ago, we began to use uh, digital media. So in this way, we classify money in terms of the media. But now after the year 2000, all of a sudden, we, we began to have a new media that is called blockchain and crypto capital media. So this is the way we look at money in terms of media. But this is only just one way to look at money. So the other way to look at money is the based on public money versus debt money. So if we look at uh, vertically, then we have so-called public money as one side, and we have debt money. And most economics profession only touches this debt money system only. So that means we only study debt money. In this cosmos of uh, money map, we only focus on this part. But this is not the only uh, area of money we have to uh, consider. So anyhow, we have two important classifications, debt money and public money. So to be more specific, also, this classification goes into this uh, blockchain-based classification. We'll discuss this one later. So what's the, what the difference between public money and debt money? So obviously, I think most of you are familiar with the concept. Public money usually is issued by the public institutions, such as Congress, government, or king and queen, emperors, uh, in those days, in all days. So, so so this is the way public money is issued. But at the same time, the, this money is issued at interest free. And the third feature of the public money is the, 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 once we have the uh, public money issued by the public institutions, they have only one time seniority, uh, which belongs to the issuer. For instance, in Japan, whenever government issued 500 yen coin, it only costs 43 yen. So that means the difference of this amount, that is 457 yen, goes to the government only once when they issue the money. So this is a seniority benefit. But there are a lot of confusion about the seniority concept. Sometimes some people say seniority uh, benefit can be also obtained through the uh, issuance of public uh, debt money, but that is totally wrong concept. All right. So compared with the feature of public money, now the debt money is uh, uh, explained by those features. Yeah. First of all, it is privately issued by private banks, including central banks, as a bank note. Then all money are issued at interest. And that interest goes to the banker's income. 
And meanwhile, private banks can create uh, deposit, so-called credit out of nothing. And the, also, uh, this credit also comes with interest that becomes uh, banker income. And finally, those debt money are used as a means of control. So those are two big differences which uh, we have to always uh, uh, Clarify when we discuss about monetary reform. So this is the way we classify the money. So that means this classification have to go into this uh, blockchain-based cryptocurrency as well, which we will discuss later. The other important classification is whether money is legal tender or not. So that means money have to be legal tender, but at the same time, money just function as if it is money. So it's called functional money. Okay. Uh, let me just discuss uh, the, the difference between those two uh, money. Legal tender, of course, you are familiar with I saw the definition of money exists not, not by nature but by law. So that means legal tender have to be uh, specified by law. That means circulation and acceptance of legal tender is always uh, forced by law. That, that means no one can uh, reject to, be, uh, to uh, accept uh, this legal tender. So in this way, once we have uh, we have public uh, money which is uh, uh, electronic, this has to be also legal tender, which I will discuss later. So compared with this one, functional money uh, is uh, very clearly defined by the Masaki Shirakawa, he is a former governor of Bank of Japan. He officially uh, claims that bank deposit, which is created as a credit out of nothing, functions as money, but bank deposits are not money. That means bank deposits are not currency at all. But most uh, banks still use bank deposits as currencies. So that's a totally wrong uh, concept. Uh, similarly, gold and silver are not legal tender, but they have been used as a money. So that means gold and silver still function as money, but they are not legal tender. That means we need not accept if we, if, if, uh, we don't want. So similarly, Bitcoin and alternative coins, now there are more than 1,000 alternative coins created by blockchain. Those are no, not legal tender. That means we can reject the acceptance of Bitcoin. So those are the, the, the way we, we classify money. So in this way, money has to be legal tender or money will function as functional money. So this is the way we classify money. So until the 2008, I focus uh, my research on traditional debt money. So this is the diagram which I used at this conference many times. So under the debt money systems, we, we experienced two great depressions. First one in 1929 and second one in 2008. But fortunately, after the first great depressions, economists proposed uh, 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 the, the solution to avoid great depression. One solution is organized by, uh, proposed by Irving Tishaf under the uh, concept of 100% money. The other, the uh, lesson was given by uh, Keynes' general theory. But unfortunately, those lessons are not well uh, adopted among, among economists. As a result, we had uh, two, we had a second great question, so-called Lehman uh, shock. But based upon this one, economists, mainstream economists failed to propose a new theory. That is why the current mainstream theory is called uh, zombie economics, because there will be no uh, solution to overcome this uh, uh, design fear under the debt money system. So Keynes uh, focused on this repeated analysis, and the American Monetary Act carried on the tradition of Fisher's hundred percent money. So I combined those two uh, concepts of uh, uh, remedy to come up with the public money system. So that's become a, So this is a today I discussed at this uh, conference many times. Uh, all right. 
So this is how I I focus on the monetary reform under the debt money system. Then what is the part money system under these uh, traditions? So I think we will not to uh, spend time to discuss on this feature. So this is the feature of the uh, debt money system. That, is, that, that means debt money system, under debt money system, the private loan, central bank issue money, and try to create out from nothing by banks, and money is used as a means of control. So under the public money system, first of all, then we have a public money administration, uh, the, maybe Congress or the government, which issues the money. Then there will be no trade creation. That means money has to be 100% uh, real money. Then money is uh, issued uh, to support economic growth and public welfare. So this is the main feature of uh, uh, the public money system under the debt money. Okay. So this is the topics which I have uh, uh, discussed at this uh, seminar many, many times. So I just don't have time to uh, focus on how this uh, public money system can be applied to Japan in the case of Japan. So, but all of all of some after 2008, we we have so-called Satoshi Nakamoto's paper on blockchain a peer-to-peer -peer electronic uh, cash system. So that that totally changed the way we think about money. And it is now called the blockchain revolution. And it has a main, three main features. That is, this money created by blockchain has a peer-to-peer -peer network, and it has a public uh, transaction ledger, and it has also decentralized verification. So um, after this uh, so-called uh, Bitcoin revolution, he began to talk about blockchain-based uh, Bitcoin and altcoins. But unfortunately, most new technologies are just applied to the current debt money system. So that means whatever new technology applied to the debt money system, it has to be just patchwork. That means blockchain-based money cannot solve the problem which debt uh, money system created. It's just nothing but the uh, patchwork. So it's very important to understand that blockchain technology cannot be applied to solve the, the current issues we are facing under this debt money system. So compared with this one, uh, we come up with a new concept of public money. That is, we call it electronic public money. So now we have to think about how we can make a transition from traditional debt money into the electronic public money. That is the thought we have been uh, trying to uh, pursue for the last couple of years. Okay. So under the peer-to-peer -peer transaction systems, the public money administration issues a new crypto money. So that money can be directly used by farmers, uh, citizens, merchants, manufacturers, financial institutions directly. So that means we don't need to have uh, banks as the intermediary uh, uh, organization. So money can be uh, uh, the, the exchange directly. Okay, this is the basic idea of how uh, electronic public money works. All right. Okay, with those uh, basic framework in mind, now it's time to classify the blockchain-based cryptocurrencies. So these are totally new classifications. So now you see. We have to classify the uh, blockchain-based money uh, in terms of public money or the debt money or the legal tender or the functional money. So in this way, we have four different types of money. That means a uh, crypto coin, so Bitcoin and more than 1,000 alternative coins uh, under this category, the crypto coin. But crypto coin is just functional money. It, it's not the legal tender. So that means we need not accept uh, Bitcoin and any other Ethereum and any other uh, crypto coins uh, have to be under this functional money. So that's a very important concept to understand. So under the legal tender, now central banks are considering to issue central bank cryptocurrency. 
So once the central bank issues this cryptocurrency, it can be used directly in this way. So this way, this new trend will totally eradicate the current banking uh, activities. So to challenge this one, most commercial banks are trying to issue their own bank tokens. Bank tokens can be supported by the traditional bank note as well as deposit. So we call it uh, a bank token, which is backed by uh, M1 or uh, money stock. So compared to this one, what we are trying to propose is the, uh, the legal tender of cryptocurrency supported by base money. So in this way, the, we are uh, considering to issue the uh, legal tender as a token, which can be converted to a coin or a banknote. So this is the concept of BPM token. They eventually, this has to uh, transfer into the whole public money system, that's EPM. So in this way, under the new blockchain uh, uh, classification, we have so, four different uh, concepts, which we have to be very, very uh, uh, the, uh, clear to classify. OK. So to, to summarize, then the, uh, all money under the blockchain can be classified under debt money system and public money system. Under debt money system, we have crypto cryptocurrency, which is not the uh, legal tender. Then central bank issue central bank cryptocurrency. Then commercial banks are trying to uh, issue their own bank code. And compared to this one, we we are, we are trying to promote the electronic public money token. Based, uh, backed by base money. Then eventually, this is a money under debt money system, but eventually we want to uh, transfer this uh, base money backed EPM top into the real uh, electronic public money. So this is the way we are trying to uh, analyze as a new monetary reform movement. Okay. So to to explain how we are trying to introduce so-called electronic public money token. So we are trying to do some experiment in Japan. So I just published a, a paper a couple of months ago at the System Dance Conference in Iceland. So you are probably, uh, you uh, uh, given me my paper at the conference. So so idea is very simple. We want, first of all, we want to have an EPM token as an experiment in some region in Japan. Uh, then we want to, if it's successful, we want to expand this experiment to the whole part of Japan. So in this way, the, we have a totally stable and uh, stable uh, EPM token as an experiment. Then if it's, okay, this is the idea of uh, the experiment. So to do this experiment, we need uh, several organizations. First of all, the, the, we have a kind of constitution consisting of the local, uh, local shops, local government, and all other the local uh, operations. So we form a kind of consortium to establish APM top. Then we look for the uh, top two exchanges. Usually, we ask the cooperative small banks in the United States, like uh, Great Union. Those commercial banks can exchange tokens. So once we have this uh, combination of consortium and uh, uh, local banks, then we start our experiment. So this is how we are trying to organize our experiment. And, uh, so to do this experiment, then the, we have three main uh, players, the consortium and uh, exchange and the users of those EPM tokens. So this is exactly what we are trying to do right now in Japan. And the benefit is that once we have this experiment, we can charge a very small amount, very small amount of uh, commissions as a just service uh, fees. So, so I do not have time to go in detail about the model, but we just created a system direct model which 
translation to show how this EPM token experiment work. Okay. So here is the benefit of the experiment. First of all, EPM token offers a secure means of payment because it is backed by cash and central bank reserve. So that means EPM token can be only exchanged uh, with cash or the central bank note. In this case, EPM token is the same as 100% DR money. Once we have this EPM token, EPM token serves fees are very cheap, cheaper than the Visa card charges and others. So that the both users and shop owners can benefit from very uh, uh, low tax fees. Accordingly, uh, the shop owners can accept these EPM tokens at very low tax uh, charges. So that means they can accept this one instead of accepting Visa card. Whenever shops accept Visa card payment, they have to pay at least five percent. But if they accept EPM token, they can only pay one percent. So there are a lot of uh, difference uh, in terms of the charge. So in this way, EPM token can be very widely used among the shop owners as well as uh, users. So eventually, now uh, local commercial banks can use this EPM token as a new business opportunity. So this is another uh, feature. So in this way, gradually we hope that this EPM token uh, will be uh, well accepted among the community. So this is the basic idea of how we are trying to convert debt money into the public money. The, in the beginning, we, I focus on the traditional way to convert debt money into the public money system. So this is what we have been uh, promoting under the monetary reform. Now, under the new blockchain period, now we are trying to now promote promote, first of all, to from central bank note into the uh, base money based EPM token. So we do this one under the experiment, as I explained. Then eventually, if this becomes popular, then we want to convert it into the real EPM token. So this is the way we try to approach new monetary reform under the age of blockchain. So this is the concept I would, I would like to share with you today. So in this way, once we have an EPM, uh, the uh, money system, which we dominate in Japan, USA, China, then in this way, we can use EPM as our own domestic money as well as uh, foreign exchange uh, uh, transactions. OK. So, so in my research, I showed two ways to attain the public money system. One way is the traditional public money Pass, which we may call monetary reform pass. The other way is the electronic uh, public money system, which we call it uh, uh, a new monetary reform system. So in this way, we can approach either route to attain the same, same result of public money system. So to organize this uh, new ideas, we will form the so-called public money forum Japan. This is a totally new a legal uh, non-profit organization established to July. And about a week ago, we opened up the new uh, homepage. Unfortunately, this is Japanese homepage, but we are trying to uh, create an English website very soon. So this is how that we are trying to promote a new binary reform in Japan, supported by the ASD, ASD media, the account system dynamic macroeconomic model. That means this is the only monetary reform supported by economic theory in the age of blockchain and uh, the crypto age. So this is the latest movement which is taking place in Japan. So my purpose of the presentation today is we want to make this movement a worldwide movement. So I call it a public money forum worldwide as a new monetary reform movement supported by the ASV accounting system dynamics macroeconomic approach. We created the public money system in Japan. So here is my uh, suggestion. If you are interested in, you could form public money forum USA or public money forum Canada or whatever country you like, then we have a more better way to promote 
new public, uh, new monetary form under the age of blockchains, supported by uh, by by macroeconomic models. So this is uh, the the movement which I like to share this one. So maybe I'm not to, I haven't explained it more in detail, but this is the basic idea of what's going on under the new monetary forms. So instead of call, uh, we call it monetary form, it's better to call public money system because we need not uh, use monetary reform because we have a new concept of uh, new monetary uh, reform, which is called public money. So why not we, we use public money for worldwide from now on? Okay, this is uh, my brief presentation. So I have 10 minutes uh, yeah. to discuss with you about this concept. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you very much, Karu. It's very, very uh, interesting, and it's you know you presented like the first um, first go at that last year, and now, now you're developing it. And it's great. It's very exciting. We've been talking about cryptocurrency and blockchain technology at this conference, and so what you've presented um, basically fits in very well with um, some of the ideas we were starting to think about um, yesterday. So um, thank you very much for that. Um, so uh, uh, Steve's going to walk around and uh, you can ask a question first, Steve, okay. Thank you. Coro, it's, it's Steve and your friend, um, your Eskimo friend, who we had dinner together once, but welcome. I'm glad you're with us today and, and all the way from Ankara. With your EPM and your public money forum, um, has this gotten out to the public yet in Japan? And are you getting any reactions from the, the uh, central bank or other private banks or other banks in Japan? Well, what, what, what's the question? I, I understood that uh, a question related with the central bank with currency. No. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, well, I think you are familiar with the, uh, the monetary initiative in Switzerland. Yeah. And what they pursued is the, the, the issuance of central bank currencies. So they, their initiative is totally taken over by central banks. So, so that means once the central bank began to issue their own cryptocurrency, I think that may dominate. On the other hand, once we are successful with this EPM token, then this EPM token could be dominant. So that means we have a new battle between the government issued EPM and central bank issued cryptocurrency, CBCC. So this could be the new battle. So there will be no commercial banks which intervene in this uh, struggle. So this is how we are trying to now predict. So eventually, the, once the, this CBCC take over, they may start uh, interest again. And so this is the now new DRCS uh, battle. And many governments like, uh, say, Venezuela and now recently Italy, and Russia, those governments are now considering to publish their own cryptocurrency, crypto money, so which we call EPM, so against their central bank cryptocurrency. So, so this has to be the new issues we have to uh, discuss more from now on, because otherwise if you stay on the traditional monetary form, we totally lose, the, lose the, uh, this uh, challenging uh, feature of those new ages. Yes, thank you, Karu. Basically, it's a way to cut out the banks, sort of going around them. <coughs> this intermediate. I have, I have a question, Dr. Yamaguchi, and I first want to thank you for a very clear presentation uh, of this kind of a transition that you, uh, you envision. Uh, in a sense, it strikes me it, as a, an extension of the local currency theory, 
that is to say, a local currency approach, but the local becomes global by virtue of the ability of, of, of the digital age. But my question is, as, as, as uh, the central bank essentially gets involved in this kind of uh, money creation, there is another question that we've always struggled with, and that is the question of how you stop commercial banks from money creation. So and my, my question is, as we move in this direction that you have described, uh, how does the final stage occur where you stop money creation by commercial banks? Well, the first of all, as you know, the uh, commercial banks own the central banks, and it doesn't matter whether the central bank can survive instead of commercial banks. And the, I'm very much concerned with the current new monetary reform movement in Europe. As my friends said, now see the, in the European uh, international monetary reform movement, there are a lot of different from the central bank. That's why now central bank are more interested in our monetary reform. That's totally wrong concept. Now central bank are trying to dominate our monetary reform in terms of currency. So one domination is uh, took place under the Swiss uh, monetary initiative. Of it. In that in that initiative, now their group uh, uh, proposed that central bank can create all uh, demand deposit account for the people in the Swiss Switzerland. So in that sense, now the their support is the central bank control cryptocurrency uh, monetary reform. So we have to be very, very now careful from now. Central bank, of course, may uh, eradicate the commercial banks. Commercial bank can only survive as, a, as a investment banks, investment banks. But the issuance of money now is now uh, uh, centralized in the central bank at the index. So this is a new, New struggles. We I predict this is the way. So you actually uh, have to give up the way of issuing the bank. For instance, Bank of America, JP Morgan, they are trying to issue their own bank token, the coin, but they never uh, go through this uh, new new struggle between EPM and CBCC. That's my prediction based upon the economic theory. Yes, Karu, and not all of the monetary reform groups in Europe propose to go through central banks. The Onscaled um, Euro proposal uh, developed by Edgar Wartman proposes uh, something so very similar to what you're proposing. What's the name there? Onscaled. Hello, this is Manuel from uh, Germany. Manuel Klein from Monetative. Um, Greetings from Joseph Huber. Uh -huh. Okay. And, um, and I was wondering if you could elaborate more on how uh, cryptocurrencies are debt-based money, because um, to my mind, they're also asset-based money. And uh, you can also see it here in the stable, if we talked a lot about it, that uh, also crypto coins and cryptocurrencies are debt-based. Well, it's, it's obvious from this table, the regular bank try to create their own, uh, say, crypto tokens. Tokens. It's supported by the traditional uh, money stock. Money stock consists of the a coin as well as this deposit. deposit. But by the way, demand deposit consists most of part of our money stock. So in this way, whenever they issue uh, issue cryptocurrency, that have to be under this. Uh, debt rate systems. So there are no way to escape the uh, interest. Okay. That's a, that's a big difference. Okay. And uh, uh, Joseph uh, Huber also supported this. He said he one tier, two tier. Whenever he said one tier, he seemed to be supporting PBCC mm -hmm. instead of EPM. Yeah. I mean, a central bank cryptocurrency can be built as an asset or a liability in the in the central bank balance sheet. So you have both possibilities. And have I understood you correctly that you say that the cryptocurrencies are 
located in the debt-based money because you can buy it only with, with debt-based money. You can think this way. When the central bank issues CBCC as a, as a debt, as a liability, yes. so they have to have the uh, government uh, security as an asset. Yes. That means, and that means government have to pay interest. But when uh, the government issue EPM, EPM can be just under the liability. At the same time, the asset side is just government asset. So there are no way to. So that's a big difference yeah. in terms of the uh, booking accounting system. Okay, thank you. Hello, Dr. Yamaguchi. This is uh, Paul Lebeau with the Alliance for Just Money. And I'm okay. uh, very interested in your work, in reading your book. Um, we've been talking, it seems, mainly about the transmission of money but uh, not the creation of money. And one of the topics that we've been discussing here is the integrity of the monetary authority. Um, and what I'm curious is, can your dynamic, systems dynamic model approach be used by a monetary authority to help determine the level of money that needs to be created each year? Yes, okay, maybe. This is how we are trying to propose in Japan. Well, the, first of all, the uh, money have to be issued under the public money as, as administrations, uh, the I call PMA. So it have to be under the Diet or the Congress. So that means now the Congress uh, the, uh, have a control over the, over the amount of money to be put into circulation. So uh, meanwhile, the Minister of Finance or the Treasury uh, are responsible for the demand for money. At the same time, we create a new Ministry of Public Money, so which is uh, just uh, uh, the organization of the Federal Reserve System in the United States, or the Bank of Japan. So in this way, we have two ministries. One Minister of Finance is responsible for the demand side. At the same time, Minister of Public Money is responsible for the supply side. In this way, we have demand and supply. Those demand and supply are just adjusted under the public money administration. This is how money is uh, the, uh, issued under the uh, more democratic way. And in my model, I have this uh, clear the uh, institution of public money administrations. And so this is how uh, I, I show to make a transition from traditional Bank of Japan into the public money world. So, so I think this kind of generic uh, transition framework works for all the uh, uh, countries' transition as well. I'm not sure that this is really, this, apply, this answer your question or not. <laughs> Partially, it's okay. Partially, okay. <laughs> At Cameroon. Uh, hi, nice to be here. Our twice are here, yeah. Still haven't written that book. <laughs> but I have a question, uh, and maybe a stupid question, but, um, but I, so I'm sure you can answer it easily. Uh, when I was looking at your diagram where um, the bank is no longer, banks are no longer an intermediary, you had a yes. diagram, yes, that one, uh, no back to the uh, one you had where, that showed uh, Peer -to -peer direct um, uh, transfer of, of money between uh, different groups, and the, uh, the there was no longer a bank as an intermediary. But I was I saw that the banks were still in one of the nodes in that uh, network. Yes. Yes. And I and I, I was trying to get my mind of if the bank's no longer an intermediary, uh, what what would be their function? Well. If I say that's a, that's a my explanation, Bank, banks uh, banks may stay in business as an intermediary of money between saving and investment. That means banks cannot be the intermediary uh, in a traditional way. But now the under the new issue, bank cannot create money, but bank can accept extra money as a saving. Then they put money into so in this way, I call in my book that genuine intermediaries. Genuine intermediaries. Banks can only accept the existing money, then put money into the where the money is needed. 
So in this way, banks cannot uh, create money, but banks can be intermediaries. So this is how tra traditional macroeconomics uh, theory is explained. So banks can be the intermediary. So in this way, as I explain here, yeah, yeah. okay. Each of the exchanges may provide better as business and investment opportunity in cash-dependent economy. That means the once we have a cryptocurrency which banks cannot issue, but uh, some people have extra cryptocurrency which are put into banks as a saving. Banks now use that amount of money in, as an investment. So in this way, banks can be the real, genuine intermediaries. But banks cannot create credit. Okay, that's a big right. difference. Right. Uh, so, so the banks would still be, uh, still have a, um, uh, a fault for EPM? Yes, yes. That's right. Especially what I will, I'm trying to create in a sense. I'm now in Turkey. They have a of special banks, a special banks similar to the uh, uh, financial system. The idea is that banks can accept savings and put into the investment. But only when that investment becomes profitable, then banks can receive some profit as a revenue. They share that profit among the investor. But once that investment fails, then the investor cannot claim their, their savings. So this is a real, I think, new way of investment. That means investment can only be paid when that investment is profitable. If they fail, then that investor is paid, so they have no way to claim their loans. So this is a kind of new uh, investment opportunity. So investors, banks, and uh, business share the same risk or the, enjoy the same profit. So, so this is a new type of investment. Yes, all right, thank you. Hi, Paul. Hi, Sue. Uh, Sue Peters. Yes, correct. So I'm just trying to get a handle on, on this. So if I was a, um, a business, would I have two payment systems that my customer would come in and they could either pay the one system that would go to the central bank and the other system that would go to the, uh, the old bank. <laughs> yes. The transition. Well, is that a question? Hello. Oh, how would, if I'm a businessman and I have a retail oh. store okay. and people come in and want to pay, are we, mm. are they going to, am I going to have two payment systems for them, mm. separate? Okay. Well, uh, if you are shop owners, uh, if you accept Visa card, uh, say, you have to pay 5% to Visa card, right? That means, uh, the, you only receive out of 100, you only receive uh, 55. But if you accept the EPM tokens, say, charge is very low, as low as 1% for instance. So in this case, if you are shop owners, instead of accepting uh, payment uh, with Visa card, if you accept the EPM token, then you can save 4%. Out of 4%, you can make uh, 2% off to the, uh, to the uh, client. So in this way, both client and shop owners benefit from EPM tokens. So in this way, eventually, eventually this new cryptocurrency business will expel uh, Visa card and other financial uh, payment uh, business very soon, in a couple of years. That's going on under very severe conditions right now. Thank you. So, the idea, so eventually, um, one more thing which we didn't, uh, we didn't we didn't discuss is under this EPM system, whenever you make payment, we have to pay so called transaction fee to the government. So we call it a commercial uh, community service fee, a save as tax. Mm -hmm. So in this way, we, we can simplify a tax system and we not worry about the uh, tax haven issue because mm -hmm. whenever you make a uh, payment, yeah. a Part of the payment goes to directly government as a tax. 
So that's a totally fair tax system. It simplifies the current complicated tax system. That's another benefit of introducing EPN. So I'm trying to uh, emphasize that new simplified tax systems under the EPM, EPM token, EPM system. So, so there are, so this is there are more, more efficient way to introduce EPM and through the internet now uh, we understand that this is a better system. So this there are no way to go back to traditional way. Even though we have a lot of uh, some uh, some disturbances or threats, still I think this is the way we are trying to move, and eventually we will end up with this new total public EPM systems. That's what I try to promote. Okay. Hi, Carol. Uh, I'm Lucille Eckrich, and I don't know if you recognize me from many AMI conferences. I, I, I know. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to say um, thank you. I want to praise your work um, and congratulate you for the distance you've traveled um, in many ways, one of which is um, making sense to people like me who have been involved in this issue a while but are not economists and uh, struggle to follow everything you've done. And this was the mo one of the most clear, if not for me, the clearest presentations you've given. And extremely exciting. I mean, I want to read more. I, of course, I need to think more and read more before I say I want to add um, public money forum to the end of our, our name, uh, the Alliance for Just Money. I, I can't speak for the whole membership um, or even the whole board or even the whole executive committee, but um, I hope you are getting funding for your work. Um, I was concerned to see you in a former slide saying you're, you were deposed from the university back in 2013. But I understand you have a son who's doing similar work as you, and I want to just thank you and praise you and encourage you, um, and we're going to learn from you. Um, so thank you. I really like you to have a civil organization that we work together under the new monetary form, so public money forum. So then this could be that new movement. Yes, thank you, Carrie. It's very exciting, and, and it's it's getting on a bandwagon. You know the, the cryptocurrency block or, uh, blockchain bandwagon. So a whole new audience for, for this um, idea. So wow. it's um, yeah, very, very good. In the economy, we have a fintech company which are very popular with our our movement. So so called hyperledger project. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Great, thank you again, Karu. And everyone, please, another, another big round of applause for Professor Karu. Thank you, Karu. Okay, thanks, Karu. We've got to change our presentation schedule. So we'll be in touch. And um, Professor okay. Yamaguchi's slides are up on our website, and, um, and there's papers that uh, referenced for these slides. Thank you. All right. Good night. Bye. Enjoy your. Bye. Bye. That's um, coming in from London, in the UK, and that's um, Rob Macquarie. He's an economist with Positive Money UK, and um, Rob has um, done quite a bit of research uh, in the last year or so, and uh, one is um, a paper he produced called Reading the Bank of England, and another one, uh, another thing he's been involved in recently is, um, well, he attended the conference in New York.